So um, you want to know how you can influence the world? If you're a journalist, then you'll, you will. Yeah, well, I think what we're thinking about is more like how um, we can like, have the same impact on future generations, like how you have had in inspiring people to become engineers and scientists and stuff like that. Uh, you'll be working in, I worked in the medium that was around when I was doing it, television. The television will be around a long time, but you'll have the internet and tweeting and Facebooking and whatever the heck else, three-dimensional quad sound. I mean, you'll have other media to work with. And I just say, stick with it. As I say, there's no, there's no big break. It's just a bunch of little breaks. And you never know which one's going to lead somewhere. Don't count on a big one. Just, they're just breaks. So it's, the longest journey starts with a single step. Question about education, um, specifically science education. Everyone's had that one teacher that really affected them, um, but oftentimes all the others kind of fall back and are not as advocate, or they don't advocate. Um, They're not as inspirational. Exactly, exactly. How, how can we fix that? How can we inspire teachers to um, better inspire the students? Well, if I were king of the forest, and I'm not, you would pay teacher more and you would get higher quality teachers. Now, this is an easy thing to say, but people don't do it. Voters and taxpayers have trouble doing it when the economy's not good. So uh, we hope that as the economy improves, people will see the value in education. If you want to have uh, a world leading economy or a world worthy economy, you have to have science education. You have to have education in general. And uh, you can show direct link between the, the uh, developed world and education. What are the big economies? Japan, Germany, United States. These are all uh, governments that value education. Australia is disproportionately large for the number of eco econo economy for the number of people it has because the education is good. And every, this is very easy to show and everybody agrees with it, but when it comes time to vote, people get a little off track, so that takes leadership. So we're working on it. But then, bear in mind, it's not just raising teacher salaries, you have to raise the quality of teachers. Yeah, a teacher has to make as much as a software engineer, whatever that is. And that's a, that's a lot of money. You know, it's, um, it's not something that, that has been popular the last few years, but we're hoping to bring it back. You know, I remind everybody, not everyone who's good at math and science would be a good kindergarten teacher. It's a different skill, but an extremely valuable one. So, the law, we have to change everything. It's gonna take time. What got you into science? Uh, I always say I don't remember. It was before I was three. Uh, and I think, <clears throat> I say this often, I think I really did have an extraordinary experience with vinegar and baking soda that my older brother, older brother put baking soda in my hand and poured vinegar, and it made the bubbles, it was amazing. And then the other thing was bees. Bumblebees were just amazing. I remember that very well, just, just sitting there watching them. I got to the point where I was convinced I was watching the same individual, the same girl bee coming and going from these bushes. See her fill up her pollen baskets, you could see it. You know, little kids would, you know, extraordinary eyesight. You're like, wow. And then she'd fly away, she'd come back. I was really, uh, I wondered about that a lot. How could such a big body support? Because I tried it, you know, it didn't work. It was something extraordinary. And this was in the D.C. area? Yeah, well, in Washington, in the Washington, D.C. It's a little bit unusual. I grew up in the city. Go Nationals, go Nats. Looking at the field of space today, um, what do you see in it that you like? Uh, well, what I see, what I see that I like is all the fantastic planetary missions. I see people facing the music with regard to orbital debris, uh, and this is the golden age or an extraordinary time in planetary exploration. Mission to Jupiter, mission to Pluto. Spacecraft orbiting Saturn, uh, spacecraft orbiting Mercury, 
Uh, we need another spacecraft to Venus. We've got to go back to Venus. But then, in human exploration, everybody's concerned because space shuttle finally was closed down so that finally those funds are available to do something else. And the something else people are doing looks like the, this is the space launch system. We'll have a launch rate so slow that it'll never be economical and people will cancel that program too. It's, uh, it's no matter what else you say about it, congressional districts, who's in favor, who's not, conservative, uh, progressive, liberal, whatever, the, the launch rate of that system is so infrequent that it'll, it won't sustain, it won't be political, politically sustainable. Well, the alternative is the CC Dev program. That's program. an alternative, yeah. An alternative. Yeah. Now, are there other alternatives? Well, I mean, I'm hoping these commercial guys can make rockets that are inexpensive enough that people will want to use them. Uh, but I think I wouldn't be surprised if building these rockets and making them economical turns out to be harder than it looked. But that's all right. People are passionate about it, and it's going to get pulled off. You know, the first astronauts from everywhere went into space on military rockets. I mean, that's how it started. And so um, I bet you there's enough, there are enough resources existing where we could explore space with humans without having these extraordinary uh, delays and extraordinary costs. So we'll see.